there was always a lot of speculation, but oh, yeah. here we got the man himself. What can you tell us about what it's like to be a pro shooter in your position right now this year? Well, there, there's there's good and bad, and I guess first, uh, I know that there's been a lot of talk on some of the different social media sites, you know, and, sure. and I know how uh, everybody has an opinion. Hey everybody, this is PJ Riley from Lancaster Archery. I'm here in the woods of Appling, Georgia at the New Breed Leopold Pro-Am uh, ASA tournament and I'm here with pro shooter Jack Wallace. Uh, Jack talked to us for our 3D blog about 3D accessories. Jack, the last shoot, Paris, Texas, everybody saw you on camera, final day shoot down, shooting a Bowtech. Mm -hmm. Some right. people thought, hey, that's different for Jack Wallace. What can you tell us about, our sh about your shooting situation right now? It's just a different kind of place I've, I've found myself in. Um, I've never been in the, you know, the middle of a season without a, you know, a signed written agreement with somebody to shoot for them. So it was, it was something a little different. Once I resigned from the outdoor group, you know, I'm a, I'm a USA Level 3 coach, and I like teaching people and working with them and coaching them. I don't want to get into arguments with people over what's the best rest in the world or what's the yeah. best name brand bow company. There's um, a lot of bow companies, and they're working hard to build the best bows that they can. Um, you know, since I had resigned from TOG, that was an all-inclusive deal, you know, so I just, that was the bow I shot. Yep. When I resigned from them, I, I need to come up with a bow to shoot. This is what I do and see what, uh, how things perform, not just in the backyard, because we've all had great backyard bows, yep. but what performs when you're out there and it's, and it's on the line and it's for real. And, and hopefully I can learn a lot from that and then make the best decision I can for, for uh, you know me and the family and everybody yeah. and not shooting Bowtech before you were you surprised at your performance there in Texas or how long did you have to even play with that bow I had to bow about two weeks um, you know I, I you know I had I've been a dealer I'd worked in a lot of shops and I and I'd, I'd tried hard to push you know the the bows that that I either shot for or worked for or whatever but the Bowtech never really caught my attention because they had not previously been involved with the NFAA, the ASA, the IBO, or you know our, our games. And I'm a believer in supporting those who support us. So I mean, I, I gotta say, I'm a 3D guy. I, I I do feel loyalty to support the people that support us, and and um, you know the hunting industries, hunting games, the different tournaments. Well, now that Bowtech had turned that way, it caught my attention, and so I. I studied up on them. I tried to learn the most I could, and the different, the different models, the different speeds, brace heights, axle lengths, and and uh, the changes they'd made over the last couple of years to try to understand where they're at right now and maybe where they're going. Jack, you were shooting uh, Bowtech at the beginning of the year. Now you shot the Halon X uh, last weekend at West Virginia. Took second place out here at the OPA. There's been a lot of talk about Jack Wallace and switching bow companies and switching bows that he's shooting. Last week, I got a call, a local shop about three hours and 15 minutes away, got their first Halon X in the season. I called the fella up, drove up that night, bought it, built it Thursday. And what I was impressed with is that it bare shaft tuned and the bare shaft and the fletched arrow both hit the same spot at 20 yards. And what it told me was this bow had phenomenal horizontal and vertical knock travel. I was very impressed. I watched the bow going in and out of presses and, and the stiffness of the riser was very impressive to me. Uh, the wall was great and I said, you know, I, I bet I can shoot this thing. Mm -hmm. I threw it in the truck that afternoon, drove to West Virginia and shot the first leg of the national championship. And, and you know, I told some of the bow junkie guys, I, I just started trying to shoot my tension release. It wasn't working well. I'd hurt my finger, so I was really losing line, and I knew it was all me. And I pulled out the strap and and finished within two points of the leader on day one, and, and that put amazing. me in sixth. And the next day was just a good day. <laughs> I was able to come back and get within a point of the leader, and, and so it was, it was a good finish. And... You know, and, and that's just one of the deals with Matthews. It's an open contingency plan, so right. I was able to earn a contingency check. Is it that there's, we talked about the famous Jack Wallace video about Matthews the from a couple years ago. Years ago. <laughs> um, how is that now then shooting a Matthews? Um, how, how do you deal with that? I mean, there's... Well, like I said, there, there had been a lot of talk, a lot of negative comments about it. And, and the fact is, people make mistakes. You know, and people sometimes they're uh, 
they say things that they don't mean or, you know, that they're upset. And, uh, you know, and sometimes they wish they could take something back. We all do it with our families, our loved ones, our, our co-workers. It's just, it's life and it happens. And I think with breakdowns and communication and people not always knowing, you know, your, your true feelings or what's going on, things like that happen. You know, we're human just like, just like anybody else. Yeah. Um, and the whole point of the video, yeah, you know, I, I said something that I thought was my opinion at the time, and I didn't realize how much it had hurt people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I tried to reach out to some folks about this very thing. The fact is, I never looked at how the people in the plant actually would have taken a video like that. I never even thought about the fact these people work every day building the best equipment they can, building what they feel is the best, most competitive equipment in the world. And I said something that could have been an insult, and that's... You know, that'd be like calling somebody's baby ugly. You know, those mm -hmm. those people are master craftsmen, and that's, they're like cabinet makers. That's their cabinet. So when I said that, it never dawned on me then how how that could have affected some people, and that's uh, it's just one of those things I regret. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just it's one of those things. And and I and it goes even deeper to, to folks like, uh, you know, Derek Phillips or, or Joel Maxfield or, or, uh, or Matt himself. It, you know, those guys did stick by me in a pretty traumatic time in my life when I had the wreck, which goes many years back, you know, when I, when I, was, uh, when I was run over. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they stuck by me and got me through that period. And it was a long time after before I was able to get another pro win through the recovery process and right. everything. So, and I understand everybody's got an opinion. But if, uh, if somebody wants to know anything, they can come up and they can ask me. You know, I'll tell them. And I always tell people the truth about what I've learned as far as the testing, the tuning, the timing, whatever. But uh, when it comes to these guys, they've always done well by my family and me. And uh, the, the video... And how it was handled, uh, that's something that's been regretful. Shooting doesn't seem to be an issue. You've had two different bows and made the podiums with both of them. So shooting seems to be going well for you. Well, I'm getting a little more practice time, getting to shoot a little more and work with some people a little more. And it's it's actually been kind of neat having Sharon around. You know, she had been a competitor for a good while, but to be able to work on her stuff, teach her. It's actually taken some stress away from me. I'm not worried gotcha. about my stuff all the time. I stress and strain to make sure that hers is as good as I can get it. Gotcha. And then I'll just kind of take mine and be like, ah, <laughs> you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. And, and that has, that's actually helped me. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's, definitely, that's definitely helped. Um, I hope to just be able to put together a good season, I think by the end of the summer, um, making sure I got all the stuff as perfect as I can get it and whatever weapon that's in my hand, just look at it as, man, that's my sword, sharpen it as good as I can and just, just get as good as I can at wielding that sword. And, and then hopefully it works into a good long-term contract and uh, then hopefully that just keeps going on because in 10 years I hope to be ready for senior pro so that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of the plan right now that's the that's the retirement plan right now so we'll see so so the next couple months I guess it's decision time for Jack Wallace got to see what's out there and figure where you're going It'd be a lot easier if Sharon just told me what to do. That way I wouldn't have to think about it, you know, or dad. But they, I, I got a funny feeling they're going to kind of stay out of this one. and just. Uh, but I, I do want to do what's best for the family and best for everybody. And, and um, I love to shoot. You know, I love the bows. I love working on them, tuning them, setting them up. And, um, but it's just a new spot that I haven't got to be in. You, you don't normally get to go to big, big tournaments and try something out. Usually it's a, it's like I said, it's in the backyard mm -hmm. and, and we've all had backyard bows. And then when the big buck walks out, we're like, what happened? <laughs> and, uh, so I am learning a lot doing it this way. So. Gotcha. Well, Jack, we sure appreciate your time. <laughs>